Hey all, and welcome back to Fuzzy Dutchy Gaming and a new video on the channel going over my current Atlas strategy that I'm running in 321. Now this is a hybrid strategy that won't suit everyone, but it's something that's made me a ton of currency and it's something that I really enjoy doing. A few people have been asking what I was doing to make currency, so I thought I'd run through how I set up my Atlas and what I do to make currency. Now, just to say people watching, if they don't enjoy Delve, it does involve 50% to 60% of the time in Delve. Now, the reason for this is I get very bored quickly of the same Atlas strategy. No matter what it is, I get bored and then I go and buy 100 orbs of making to reset my Atlas tree to do another strategy. I might do that for a day and then I get bored. I then go and spend another 100 chaos respecking my tree. And I just got fed up of doing that. I like every lead mechanic in the game, give or take a couple, but I can't do the same thing over and over again. So I needed to find a way that I can not be spending so much money respecking my Atlas, but still enjoy the game and want to carry on playing. And for me, I found a perfect mix and it involves a mapping strategy combined with Delve. We'll go through uh, some of the loot that I've had from both Delve and my Atlas strategy in a bit. What we'll do first is just talk around the Atlas side of the tree. Now, as we said, it centers around Delve and mapping. It's a combination, so we take a few nodes of each. So if we just look at Delve first off, I'm always forcing Nico into the map, either with um, a Master Mission or Scarabs because they're dirt cheap. So we take this one here and then this one here because this adds basically damage, speed, movement speed when you pick up a Delve node. So then that just gives you more movement speed to get through the map, more tankiness, more damage. The build doesn't necessarily need it, but movement speed never hurts. And for two points, it's well worth it. We take these Delve nodes here to give increased sulfite when we pick up a node. And then this here, which gives me a 10% chance to contain an equal amount of Azurite. And when I do my maps, I'm getting between two and a half to three and a half thousand sulfite uh, when I hit a node. So that means every 10th node I hit on average, I'm going to get three and a half thousand Azurite, which is about 20 to 30 cows because you can buy resonators with it. There are other Delve nodes. I decided not to take them because this is a hybrid strategy. So what am I doing to make currency when I'm mapping? And I wanted to do stuff that's very quick to do and very easy to sell the loot. So I've gone for Legion, Essences, and Delirium. We're not forcing anything onto the map other than Legion with a Scarab, but with the amount of Delirium nodes we get and the amount of blockers we get, I'm getting Delirium about every other map. And I'm just aiming really for Delirium orbs. So we go through the map, if there is a legion, we clear it. If there's essences, we kill them. We get to the end to kill the boss. I'm running it on strand and I normally get seven rewards and I've picked up an absolute ton of deli orbs. And then the reason legion's in there, uh, twofold. One, you get a lot of emblems. I'm running the five ways myself, but any excess Templars I get, I'm selling off. The other three ones, they're not really worth selling, so I'm just leaving them in my stash. You also get loads and loads of incubators, so you can get stuff like stack decks, currency, scarabs loads of stuff which i can then put on when i'm running in delve so that i get another bonus from running through and killing monsters every now and again i'm going to get some loot drop that's going to be worth some currency and then essences will know they're not amazing money they're very easy to sell in bulk and um, even if i get say 90 percent of the value they're pretty easy to sell in bulk on trade and that's really the whole idea of this strategy is i want stuff that is easy to liquidate and i don't necessarily have to spend a long time selling it because i don't want to have to come out of Delve, for example, to sell. So what I'll do is I'll do a few rounds of Delve and a few rounds of my mapping strategy, and then I'll go price up on my loot and sell it, sit in my hideout for five or 10 minutes, reorganizing all of my stashes. And then normally if I've priced it correctly, most of the stuff will have sold. Now you do need a pretty well-rounded character to do it because Delve is not particularly easy, although I'm not going very, very deep. Legion, again, is also not the easiest mechanic to do if you haven't got a decent character. Delirium is fairly simple because we're not really juicing the map too much. Uh, in terms of what I'm using in the map with us, I'm really just using what I find and I'm only buying supplies when I need to. So you can see I'm out of my sulfite scarab. So once I've run out of Nico missions, I will need to buy some. And I've only got three rusted legions left. If you want to be making as much money as possible, you want to be running gilded legion scarabs. Definitely because you're going to get a lot more out of the maps. I want to just kind of go along and do whatever I can with the supplies that I've got. Once I've run out of Rusted, I probably will go and buy some Gilded Scarabs and then I've got a supply ready for when I need to map. I'm also sticking in Cartography Scarabs just to give more maps to drop, but now I am starting to get oversupplied on maps probably, so I can probably not bother about this. So it is really just a Sulfite Scarab and then a Legion Scarab and then I'm just Alcan going the map and I'm running it. 
I've got a very, very quick character, so I can get through a map in sort of one, one and a half minutes. Pick up all the soul fight, complete the legion that'll add like 30 seconds onto the map. Collect the deli orbs at the end when we get delirium and then rinse and repeat until my soul fight's full. And then I go into delve. So let's talk about why delve and how profitable is it? So I'm going to link Jorgen's channel in the video description. He was kind of the person that gave me the idea to delve. I watched a few of his videos and it looked like a lot of fun and it looked profitable and it looked a good way to break up mapping because it can get quite monotonous. And I know zero about Delve. I've never done it. So I watched a few of his videos to get a grasp of the basics. Decided to go down to between two to 300 depth and then just go sideways and see how we got on. And it's been super, super profitable. Now, I don't plan to go much further because although my character is fairly tanky, it's not to the point where it can get down to sort of depth 400. I wouldn't have thought and comfortably do the content. Whereas at the level I'm at, I can do all of the bosses without even thinking about the mechanics because I instantly phase nearly every single boss unless there's really horrible modifiers on it and it's a very very quick character so i can just run through the darkness pick up fossils blow up walls i can just whirling blades or flame dash back again and with the darkness resistance i've got i don't really have to worry about dying and then every now and again if i feel in danger i can just drop a flare um so we'll just go through some loot examples from delve now i have sold quite a few bits but i've still got some bits together um, for this video so these rings here bosses have a chance to drop them all the rings combined, you can sell for a Precursor's Emblem, which are really sought after rings if you get the right rolls. I'm just selling the rings as I find them because they're between 60 to 90 chaos uh, per ring. I've found two alls and one of them dropped an alls uprising. And if we have a look just unidentified, they're 3.7 to 4 divines. I could ID it, then I've got potential to get up to 10 divines, but I've got a potential for it to be worth 15c. So me, I'll definitely be selling these unidentified. You can drop the ultimatum aspects uh, from bosses as well. These again go for a fair amount of money. So this one here is 50C. You get fossils that can be worth money. So I found a couple of faceted fossils, which are about half a divine each. Dropped a ton of resonators. And also you'll get a lot of Azerite and you can buy resonators. Had decent raw currency in terms of divines, exalts and annulments. And loads and loads of awakened sextants, which mainly come from the Delve cities. And then speaking of Delve Cities, I've just done a run of, I think it was four or five cities. And this is a loot that I got out of it in less than 10 minutes. And this is probably a bad haul. There was lots of armor and jewelry chests, which basically dropped nothing. You get a big, big amount of Awakened Sextants in Delve. Whenever you get a mapping currency chest, there's a good chance there's six to eight Sextants sitting in that chest. All this stuff adds up and you're going to have hundreds and hundreds, possibly thousands of all this bubblegum currency that you can sell in bulk really easily. Again, we've had 15 resonators drop uh, from the four or five cities. And then lots of T14 to T16 maps that you can either use for your strategy or you can use to boss rush or you can horizon them into maps and sell them in bulk. Lots of things you could do with them. These I haven't valued. The rest of the tab is about 110 C and it's from no time at all. And this is without any boss drops. So if you just hit up cities, you're going to get a good few divines per hour. Then if you can get lucky and find an all or find another boss, you can drop some loot that's really worth some currency. And again, you can find fossil nodes where you could get a fossil that's worth 80 to 100 chaos. And the way I've done delving is kind of different probably to most people that delve. Most people that delve stack resistance, don't have too much damage, and just rely on the fact that if they know the mechanics, that they're basically never going to die in delve. Whereas I've gone the opposite. I've just gone super quick. I have got good damage and I've got okay defenses, good enough for the depth that I'm at. I'm very rarely dying. And I'm just running as quick as I can from node to node, nipping in the side alleys, getting fractured walls blown up, getting fossils, chests, and I'm just getting through the nodes as quickly as I can. I think it's probably not optimal because I might be missing the odd side path, but it's going to be at least three times quicker than a lot of characters that are made specifically for delving. However, like I say, I'm not going particularly deep. I'm only sort of 230. It is easy though. The bosses are dying in seconds. I can face tank all of their attacks for the most part and just move away from the telegraph ones. So I think I could certainly go down a bit more to 300. Um, I, but I, as I say, I don't know Delve, so I don't know how much more profitable it is at 300. So for now, I'm just going to carry on going sideways. It's very difficult to judge this per hour because Delve is very spiky in terms of returns. You might have an hour where you only get two divines worth of loot, but then you might have another hour where you get 10 divines worth of loot. It is very, very profitable. And if you enjoy this sort of thing, it's great. If you don't enjoy Delve, it's obviously not going to be for you. And that's the reason I've mixed it up with a mapping strategy 
that I can do when I come out of Delve. A lot of people that play Delve would just map to get their soul fight back. The less time they're in maps, the sooner they can get back to Delve because that's what they enjoy doing. I do like it, but I also like mapping when I've had a break. So what I'll do is maybe spend an hour on my mapping strategy. Once I'm full of soul fight, I'll stop using my Nico missions, get lots of delirium orbs, get lots of emblems. And then once I'm full and I'm a bit fed up of mapping, I'll go into Delve, use all of my soul fight and then rinse and repeat. Now, I have been doing Delirium for most of the league, so I'll show you my Delhi tab. It is not all from this strategy, but it does drop a ton of Delirium Orbs. So if we go Delirium, I've got 92 fine Delirium Orbs. I've been using some Skittering ones every now and again um, and respecting my tree just to keep my Scarabs up. And then I've got 29 Diviner Orbs. The reason I've got just these three is that I did have Harvest as a strategy earlier on, and I forgot to sell all of my currency. So I decided to use the blue currency to re-roll my deli orbs into one of these three since these sell in bulk for more than the rest these are definitely worth big currency and so are the diviners ones and blue harvest juice is not a lot i could sell ten thousand of it get a divine or i can use 30 to re-roll a delirium orb and i think it's definitely worked out better and it's easier to sell rather than have to sell lots of individual delirium orbs i've now got stacks that are much easier to sell and then if we go into Legion, as I say, I've been running my own five ways just to get leveled up. So I'm now 98. I may start selling sets at some point, but they're really not worth that much. And in five ways, I'm normally getting two to three uh, Legion jewels drop, along with lots of currency and incubators and things like that. They're fun to do and they're definitely profitable. So I think I'm just going to carry on running them rather than sell the sets. And then if I end up with lots of excess Templars, these sell for sort of 15, 16 chaos each in bulk. I wait till I've got four or five, list them up in trade in bulk, and they sell really, really quickly. So as I say, this is not a strategy that is going to suit everyone, but if you're someone that wants to try Delve and tinker with it, go for it. I'd recommend uh, going to the channel I've linked in the video description. There's a ton of useful stuff about Delve, and there are videos made for beginners as well. If you don't know anything about Delve and how it works, there's some really good videos on the channel. So in terms of the actual Atlas mapping strategy, it is fairly straightforward. I don't think it needs much more explanation. You basically set the tray up like this, put a Legion and a Sulfite Scarab in, and you run the map. I'm not using Sextants because they're, they're too expensive. I don't really see a point in rolling random Sextants when it's going to cost me 20 Chaos to put Sextants on for four maps. I'd also have to take these nodes up here, and I can't really spare any points with the setup I've got. You could obviously buy some Compasses if you wanted on trade, but because it's a hybrid strategy, I'm really not that bothered about min -max in the Atlas side of things. I just want to make it fun and make sure that when I am doing it, I get loot drop that I can sell really easily. And then I'll just quickly show you the Essence tab. Again, this has been something I've been doing for quite a bit of the league. I've sold a lot. I've used a lot. But overall, I've got a decent supply uh, for when I decide to sell them. But I may use some of them to try and craft uh, for profit. So what am I doing when I go into Delve? I'm basically looking for cities, which are these ones here. These drop a lot of currency, along with things like sextants. Chaos Orbs, I've had Divines, Anoles, Exalts, you get Resonators, you get Fossils, loads of good stuff in these. You get your special nodes here, although these aren't as valuable as they are at the beginning of the league. You get stuff like, you know, Curse on Hit Rings, Cold Fossils, things like that. And then I'm also looking out for Fossil Nodes. Some of them, like this Smuggler Stash, are not really worth hitting up. They just give you really, really cheap Fossils. But if we go over and have a look at some of the other nodes I've hit, so here, for example, this Magma Fisher um, contained a Sanctified Fossil or Fractured Fossil. I forget what one. It was worth 80C. I had another one um, over here. Again, this fossil was 80 to 90C. There's loads and loads of nodes that are worth currency. And then I've also found some bosses. I found a couple of all. So if we go and try and find the Primeval Ruins. So here, the Crystal King's Throne got an alls. Dropped me a ring that was 80C. And then we had another Crystal King's Throne here. This one dropped me uh, the Amulet. So that's like four divines straight away, selling it unID'd. There's the cities I could go to down here to get more currency. And I'm sure the further down you go, the more cities turn up, the more bosses turn up, and the more fossils turn up. So once I'm a bit more experienced in Delve and I know a bit more about what I'm doing and I at least know the mechanics of the bosses, then I'm going to start pushing the character further down, maybe 3, 350, and see how we get on. Because at the moment it is easy street. I'm zooming through all of the nodes the bosses i very rarely have to even do the mechanics because i'm phasing them so i think the character could definitely go down it's just the fact that the further down you go the modifiers can get much more difficult so it might be that you finally find that all and the modifiers are too difficult to get the encounter done but that's 
something I have to learn as I go along and I'm really enjoying doing it. So I put some very brief comments in the video description about how to do the strategy because I know I've kind of flown through it. But that's kind of it for the video. It's been very profitable and for me it's really helped break up the monotony of mapping because I do get bored very easily doing the same strategy. This just gives me a break from it and then I'm more fresh to go back in and I'm more comfortable doing the same strategy maybe for a few days rather than feeling like I want to change every 20 or 30 maps. Now, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. Take care and see you in the next one.